All right, so now we're going to get into the last section of Unit 4. Today we're going to split this section up into two parts because it is a lot of material to cover. So this last section is going to be us determining how to write equations of lines given certain things, okay? So there's going to be two really popular ways that we could write an equation of a line. One of them we saw a whole lot in algebra, the slope-intercept form, otherwise known as y equals mx plus b where M here represents your slope and B represents your y-intercept. But there is another form that we can use that's maybe not as commonly used in algebra, but we still do have it, and it does have a lot of applications for us in writing equations of lines, and especially as we get on into higher math, such as algebra 2 and even in calculus, and that is the point-slope form. And the point-slope form reads as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 okay and in this formula m still represents the slope of the line and then this x1 y1 represents any random points on my line so it doesn't necessarily have to be an intercept it can be any random point okay so let's get into the different ways on how we can write equations of lines given different criteria so first up is if we are given a slope and the y-intercept, or we are given m and b. Okay, so in this first example, we're asked to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line having the given slope and y-intercept. So we're told that I need to write an equation of a line having the slope of 3, having the y-intercept of negative 10. Well, keeping in mind that slope-intercept form is just y equals mx plus b, where the y and the x, we're not subbing anything in for those, okay? This kind of works as a machine that we can use to determine what other equation can be, what points that are on that line can be. So we're not going to replace the y and the x, but we will replace the m and the b with the parts that are given to us. So if m is 3, we'll put y equals 3x, and my y-intercept is 10, or negative 10, so I'll put minus 10. Okay, so just because the formula says y equals mx plus b, that doesn't necessarily mean that the y-intercept is always going to be positive. Okay, let's look at the other one. Write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line having the given slope and y-intercept. So my slope is 3 fourths, my y-intercept is 3. So I'm just going to plug in the pieces for m, and then the y-intercept is my b. So I'm going to plug in the piece for b as well. And my line will be y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. Okay, so let's look into some more, some more examples, okay? So what if you're not given the y-intercept? What if it said you're given the slope and then just some random point, okay? Or you're given your m and just a point x1, y1. So let's explore that. Okay, so this example. Write an equation in point-slope form of the line having the given slope that contains the given point. So I've got a slope of 4. And I've got the point negative 4, 8. Again, so negative 4, 8, that's not any kind of a y-intercept. We can tell that because the x is not 0. It's not going to be any kind of an x-intercept because the y is not 0. So negative 4, 8 is just some random point that is on this line. So we still need to determine how to set this thing up, how to write our equation in point-slope form. Well, I'm merely going to do it exactly what it says. So Point slope form up here tells me y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so that minus is always going to be there. So even if my y is negative, it's still going to have a minus sign in there. So when I first set this up, y, this first y I'm not replacing, minus y1, which is 8, q over here, is equal to 4 from my slope, 4 times x minus negative 4. So again, x minus negative 4 minus negative turns to positive. So in point slope form, my equation is y minus 8 is equal to 4 times x plus 4. Okay, now the cool thing about point slope form is that if you can get an equation into point slope form, you can then work your way down into getting it into slope intercept form. So let's say you wanted to get an equation in slope intercept form but you didn't have the actual intercept, the actual y-intercept to do that, well, if you've got any other random point, you can easily do it. So, if I was to go from here and distribute that 4, I would wind up with y minus 8 is equal to 4x plus 16. 
And then from there, I'm just going to get y alone by adding 8. So I have y is equal to 4x plus 24. So these two equations right here, they represent the same line. It's just two different ways of representing it, two different ways of saying the equation of the line. Okay, let's look at number four here. Write an equation in point slope form of the line having the given slope that contains the points, that contains the given points. So my slope is negative 2.4, and the point on my line is 14, negative 12. So I'll first set this up in point slope form. So when I do that, I'll have y minus negative 1, or excuse me, y minus negative y, y minus y1, excuse me. So y minus y1, my y1 is negative 12, so that would be y minus negative 12, so be y plus 12, is equal to m negative 2.4 times x minus 14. So this is my point slope form of my line. And then just for the heck of it, just so we can build up that practice in order from getting from point slope to slope intercept, I'll go and distribute the negative 2.4 and I'll wind up with y plus 12 is equal to negative 2.4x plus 33.6. And then to get it in slope intercept form, I'm going to subtract the 12 and wind up with y is equal to negative 2.4x plus 21.6. Okay, so what do we do if we don't have the slope at all? What if we're just given any two points that could exist on this line? Just any, any two points at all that might exist on this line. Let's explore that. Okay, so this first one. Write an equation of the line through each pair of points in slope-intercept form. Okay, so we got two points. Okay, through any two points, there's exactly one line that passes through. So we're going to determine what that line is. So if I don't have any kind of a slope, both of our uh, ways to write equations kind of depend on us having a slope. So I don't currently have my slope, but I can find my slope. Okay, so if we remember back from 4.3, we had our slope formula, which told me that m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so over here, I've got x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So, I'm going to first find my slope. So, I'll say 3 minus 5 over 3 minus 0. That'll give me a slope of negative 2 thirds. So, now I've got a slope of negative 2 thirds and I've got two points. So, at first you might be thinking, well, let's just do point slope form and that is brilliant. That will work. But, Let's think smarter, not harder. So look at our points. One of the points they give us is 0, 5. Okay, so 0, 5 we recognize as being the y-intercept. Okay, so anytime a, slope, anytime a point has 0 for its x, it is going to be a y-intercept for us. So if I've got the slope and I've got the y-intercept, I don't have to go through the trouble of doing point-slope form. I can just go ahead and put it in, in slope-intercept form right here y is equal to negative two-thirds x plus five. Okay, let's look at number six here. Again, write an equation of the line through each pair of points in slope-intercept form. So we're given the points negative 12, negative six, and eight, nine. So we're going to go through the same process we did last time. So we need to first find our slope. So y2 minus y1, nine minus negative six will be nine plus six over x2 minus x1, so 8 minus negative 12 becomes 8 plus 12. So we get 15 over 20, which will reduce to 3 fourths. So we have a slope of 3 fourths. <clears throat> so now we have a slope, and we got two points to pass through the line. And last time we got lucky because we were given the slope, we were given the y intercept. Okay, this time we got to do a little bit more work. So we've got two points, so I'm just going to pick one. I'll pick negative 12, negative 6, just so in my equation it'll all be positive. And I'm going to write it out in point slope form. So I've got y minus negative y1, or excuse me, y minus y1, so y minus negative 6 will give me y plus 6, is equal to 3 fourths times x minus x1, or x minus negative 12, give me x plus 12. So from here I'm going to distribute the 3 fourths. So I get y plus 6 is equal to 3 fourths x plus 9. And then to get that y alone, I'm going to subtract 6. And I have y is equal to 3 fourths x plus 3. 
All right, so what if we're not explicitly given any points? What if instead we're just given the graph of a line and asked to determine what the graph of that line is? So let's look at an example. So write an equation in slope intercept form for the line shown below. Okay, so on this line, we were lucky enough that they did give us two points. Okay, so even if they don't necessarily give you two points to work with, just look for anywhere on the line where it seems like there's an X and a Y line that are crossing, and that will be a definite point. But they do give us two points, and the two points they give us, I just labeled as A and B, are 0, 1, and 3, 3. Okay, so I need to figure out what my slope is, because all I've got so far is two points. So, set it up in my slope formula. So I'll get Y2 minus Y1, 3 minus 1, over X2 minus X1, 3 minus 0. So I have a slope of 2 thirds. Now, alternatively, you didn't necessarily have to do any algebra. If you remember that slope is also rise over run, you could have started at point A and said that to get to point B, I have to go up 2. I have to rise 2 and go over 1, 2, 3. So rise 2, run 3. So same thing. You didn't necessarily have to use algebra to solve for your slope this time. Okay, so we have our slope. We have the point 0, 1, which is our y-intercept, so I can write my equation pretty quickly as just y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 1. Okay, let's look at number 8. Okay, so again, they give us two points to use, so I just label those points as a and b. So my a is over here, negative 3, 3. My b is down here at 0, negative 3. So, got to find my slope. So two ways you can do it. You can either do it algebraically, or you can just do the rise over run trick in the graph. Either way, you should wind up with negative 6 over 3 or negative 2 for your slope. Okay, so once you've determined that your slope is negative 2, you know that one of your points, 0, negative 3, is the y-intercept. So you can write your equation pretty quickly as just y is equal to negative 2x minus 3. 